Hello everyone, uh, I'm Ibne and uh, I'm currently in Canada as you can see from my jacket, you know, like it's pretty cold here. Uh, it's 26th of November, it's pretty cold here. Uh, but yeah, I just wanted to kind of share with you, you know, like some of the reality, some of the insights regarding the startup visa program that I'm part of and to basically do some reality check for you guys so you guys are prepared if you are planning to move to Canada uh, by the startup visa program. So, uh, you know, uh, I'll straight away jump into the topic. So basically, I applied for the startup visa program back in April 2024 when I submitted the application. I had to basically go through all the, those due diligence processes, you know, interviews and all those, you know, like uh, validation of ID and all that. But uh, long story short, I submitted, I got the letter of support and I submitted my application back in early April 2024. And at that time, we had the option to basically apply for a one-year work permit, uh, which is basically, you know, like, uh, uh, extendable up to three years, I guess. But, you know, like, uh, I guess there was a misinformation uh, in regards to or a misassumption that, you know, usually those work permits can be applied for three years as well and not necessarily for one year. But those are closed, those were closed work permits. But in the recent changes, you know, like uh, announced by IRCC, now the startup visa uh, program applicants, they can now apply for a three years open work permit straight away. Uh, the one whose application has been, you know, in process for the before uh, 3rd of October, uh, their applications are still subject to the old criteria. However, they are still able to apply for the new work permit. Uh, the only benefit that they're going to get is basically kind of waiver of the fee, visa fee that uh, usually applicants are subject to as a compensation for their early work permits. Uh, so that's tempting actually, you know, like you can get three years of a straight uh, open work permit, but let's do some reality check here. I applied for the closed work permit in April, 27th or 26th of April. It's 26th of November right now, and I haven't still heard from IRCC in regards to my closed work permit. So imagine that, you know, that my closed work permit is ta has taken more than seven months so how how are they going to deal with you know the open work permits applications uh, moving on and if i like basically want to you know like change uh, the closed work permit to open work permit how long that is going to take until i run out of cash i don't know about that but you know like uh, it's not just me uh, i have met other founders in the incubation programs and uh, there was one nigerian guy who told me he got his work permit after a lapse of six months from the point when he submitted the application. And then uh, on top of it, you know, the founders who have been part of the previous incubation programs, like they have been here for the past two years, uh, their work permits are now pending for renewal after expiry of their first permit, first year permit. Now their work permits are pending for renewal and it's been almost seven, eight months that they haven't heard anything on that. And they are stuck in Canada because you know, like if they go out, they have to basically, you know, the process is going to just roll over and they have to start from scratch in regards to application of the work permit. And then they can't enter Canada unless they have your work permit. So they're kind of stuck here for the past seven, eight months. But that's not the only thing. You also have to be careful and you have to have to be, you also have to keep in mind that uh, those guys who have their, you know, application submitted for the past two years, they haven't got any acknowledgement received or their files haven't been opened yet. They're, they haven't got any acknowledgement number. They got no application number for their PR applications. So for the past two years, their application haven't been even opened, uh, you know, uh, by the IRCC officers. So that's the reality. So I was lucky, I was fortunate. I came, you know, like uh, with, with, and this is the case of those who come with the strong incubation agencies and those agencies do have, you know, a little bit of government backing as well. So those are considered the most legit agencies, unlike those, you know, private law firms which are charging you two hundred thousand or three hundred thousand dollars for a startup visa. That is all, you know, like I would say, guys, don't fall for that. Spending two hundred thousand dollars or three hundred thousand uh, dollars to get startup visa, it's no, it's definitely, you know, I w I wouldn't consider that even. Unless you are five guys and you're like super rich dudes and you want to throw that money, uh, even then startup visa, PR under startup visa program is not guaranteed, right? The good thing is that it is not basically associated with the success or uh, failure of your startup. 
it's more associated to basically how much you know like you're able to uh, you know progress and how much progress you can uh, show in regards to your startup uh, but the thing is they're like a chicken and egg situation you have to do one thing to get the other thing but on the other side you have to do the other thing to get the first thing so you know a lot of those things i was surprised when i practically experienced those here uh, and you know like uh, it's it's a totally different market it's basically a very silent market i would say you know and, and and honestly trust me guys you know if you don't if you ha even if you do have the work permit what i would suggest you when you're especially if you're basically you know like uh, paying a standard fee of let's say 30 to 50 thousand dollars for your startup visa uh, you know, I would still suggest you to basically not come here and do your validation when you're offshore because the cost of living in Canada is like crazy. I have been, you know, I come from, I came from Malaysia and I have been basically in like spending a thousand dollars per month for like a super luxury three bed apartment, you know, that was fully furnished and all that. But here in Canada, I'm spending almost, uh, you know, almost close to 3x cost of that for a one bedroom crab apartment. So, and that's not even in downtown, that's like a bit, a bit far from downtown. So I would suggest you, you know, like when you're, when you're considering startup visa program, do consider other options. You know, there is brilliant program, there are brilliant programs, uh, you know, offered by US. I do qualify for O1 program and I don't know why did I not sign up for that, uh, but I'm really seriously considering that now that, you know, I should rather go to US. Uh, through O1 program instead of, you know, like wasting my time in Canada or basically are just spending my money until I run out of cash and go broke. So I would suggest you guys, I mean, the market is really tough. I know founders and entities who have been, uh, you know, like uh, spending tons of money in Canada and they haven't been able to even generate, uh, you know, uh, revenue for, for, you know, past couple of months. I mean, uh, they have been generating tons of money from uh, US, but, you know, the same product, the same thing, in Canada, they have been able to achieve or get even a single paying customer. So yeah, I mean, for my startup, it's a total different thing. You know, like uh, we are getting some traction and validation, but honestly, trust me, for the same startup, I got like a hundred plus LOI sign in one month when I was launching this in Southeast Asia. And uh, for Canada, you have to basically, you know, refine and adjust a lot of things to local market. And the market here is not big. Imagine, you know, a country which is bigger than US, but has a population which is comparatively either close to or less than Malaysia. So you can imagine, you know, how, how silent this country is. And, you know, with a lot of immigration measures being taken very aggressively, like policy being announced one day and the very next day is becoming effective without any transitionary period or giving, you know, those affected any, any time to basically prepare themselves. I'm not saying that about myself. I'm saying that about others who, who are, you know, like on under different programs. I don't know what those are. But, you know, drastic changes. Startup visa is becoming more lucrative, but these are the ground realities. So you should be also aware of, you know, the delays, the hiccups, uh, the contingencies associated with this program. And still, at the end of the day, there is no guarantee. I know a company, they made, they were making $4 million in revenue, but their startup visa I mean, under their startup visa, their PR was rejected. And they had to basically eventually go to the court. Uh, and, you know, like, uh, I don't know how they got a result, but they, they told that they have to pursue the process through court eventually. Uh, so, so yeah, yeah, those are the ground realities about startup visa. So if somebody tells you, hey, pay us $300,000, $300, we are going to get you letter of support. Letter of support does not mean shit, to be very honest. You know, it, it is how much effort you can put into your startup. It's how much money you can put in your startup. You know, one thing that they say that they are more, they are prioritizing applicants who uh, who are going to get some uh, investment from some approved agencies. So where are you going to find those agencies? Those agencies have specific criteria, right? So I was speaking to one of the agencies the other day and, you know, they really like my startup. But the thing is that their qualifying criteria is you have to be here for two years at least and you have to have uh, almost five full-time working employees who should either be PR holder or citizenship holder. So the condition is like more strange as compared to business visa previously where you can spend $70,000 over the period of three years and you know have one PR holder as an employee or a citizen as an employee. So you know like I guess that this is very unfair uh, where, you know, startup visa holders, they are putting in their money before they come here. They have to pay, 
this upfront cost to the agencies who are issuing leather support. So that already is enough validation of the commitment that they're showing. Other than, you know, those business visas or, you know, express profiles where they are not bringing shit into the country and still their applications are like streamlined and, and you know, like fairly processed earlier. But, you know, like for startup entrepreneurs, uh, I guess that they are the one who the economy is looking forward to. But I guess that the processes are really unfair to them. I guess that, you know, like uh, uh, they are, they are, I mean, a lot. This three years, let me tell you one more thing. This three years open visa, uh, open work permit uh, announcement was made due to the fact that a lot of entrepreneurs who were coming into Canada to launch their startups, they ran out of cash and literally they went broke and they had to leave Canada. So they, they saw that issue like so late and now they have realized that, okay, the startup founders, they, they should be allowed, you know, uh, three, three, month, three years of open work permit where they can generate some cash flow. I, I, I'm happy that they finally realized it. But you know the timeline now that they have increased it from 32 months to like 40 plus months, like it's it's unfair, you know, like how do you think, I mean, Canadian employment market is so saturated and startups, they take a lot of effort and a lot of timing. Are you gonna look for a job or are you gonna focus on your startup? So so the thing is that, you know, like it's, it's kind of chicken and egg and you know, like, the the guys the the founders they are they're really distracted you know like by by these uh, delays from IRCC like for example in my case you know it's been seven months I haven't got my work permit and I can't do certain activities to basically you know, like scale my startup because it, those fall under the criteria of full time job you know or, or or work so how can I scale my startup you know without doing those so so as I mentioned, it's like a chicken and egg, you know, you have to be really considerate of, I, I would suggest you guys don't come to Canada unless you've got your, you know, open permits at least, or you have like, you know, secure some kind of a job or something. Uh, you know, it, it's really, it's really not, not, not worth it. You know, spending $300,000 to basically secure an open work permit and you're not gonna be able to basically make those $300,000 back even in the next five years based on how the economy of Canada is like, you know, going on right now. So yeah, these are some insights. These are some true facts. So if you have any specific questions, feel free to basically comment your questions or feel free to reach out to me. I'll be more than happy to answer you. You know, I'll, I'll keep you posted on my startup journey here as well. I was really excited about it, but you know, like it's been four months, I started realizing the ground facts, you know, and I'm sharing the, those with you so you can benefit from these. So yeah, thank you so much for, you know, watching this video and if you have any questions comments uh, please put those on and I'll, I'll definitely be more than happy to answer those thank you